Morning everybody, it's Claire here from Sewn by Claire and today that I thought that we'd make a start on the wool coat. Now the wool coat features on in book one on the cover here, there's lovely one in the pale blue and then there's some better pictures for you as well in here as well. So I sport in a lovely patchwork scarf there and over the top of the polka dot dress. So it's a really sweet um, coat, it's made from felt in the Cool Crafting book. Um, and I actually was a little bit nervous about starting this one. I don't quite know why. I, I think it's the buttonholes at the end. So spoiler alert, I tried, but I've, I've, I'm not happy with the finish of the buttonholes, so I've taken them out. So we're going to do something else instead. But I think actually it'll be a lovely little sewing tip that you'll enjoy and hopefully you'll be able to um, use that on other garments as well. So you'll have to wait to the end for that bit, but hopefully that's um, not too much of a spoiler for you. Or if you can't wait, jump ahead. Um, I'll have um, bookmarked all of the chapters for you anyway, like I do normally. So back to this one. So I made a test garment just so that I could have a little practice in before I started using my um, precious um, cool crafting wool. This is 100% wool, so it'll behave exactly the same way as the um, as the coat that I make for um, Luna and Wilhelmina. Um, and I've really enjoyed making it. Now, felt is forgiving in, in a couple of ways because there's no nap to it. So if you remember, we've spoke about nap before when we've been making clothes in that there's no, it's not directional. So you can put your pattern pieces any way you like, diagonally, up and down, you know, whatever you like. Um, and there's no right side or wrong side either. So whilst that's easy when you're cutting out because you can then use the fabric um, as best as you can and, and get the most out of it, it can, cause some problems when you come in to sew it because of course you need to remember which is the left and the right and which is the right side and the wrong side that you're going to be using just so that you don't end up with two left fronts or two right fronts and you know that we've spoken before about mirroring pattern pieces you don't need to do that on felt because you can use both sides it's interchangeable so whilst that's good it means that it might lull you into a false sense of security as to how much fabric you may need if you then choose to make this out of a different kind of fabric so for example if you wanted to make it out of a quilting cotton perhaps then you would need to be aware of um, when you're cutting it out and mirroring your pieces that you've got a right side and a wrong side so that might just affect layout of your pattern pieces um, the other thing is if you wanted to make this in like um, a velvet or a cord, um, again, it's possible, but I wouldn't suggest it's possible for a, a beginner sewer to use that. I would stick with the felt if you're a beginner sewer. Um, but if you were using a felt where, you know, like on a cordray, how you can smooth your hand down and it feels nice and smooth. But if you run your hand the other way on the fabric, it almost like catches um, as you go up and there's resistance to, the, to, the, to your hand smoothing along it trying to think of the right words um then that's called a nap so that means that you have to have or it's ideal to have all of your pattern pieces the same direction which would be north to south or south to north whichever way you choose in order that all of your pattern pieces have the same look and feel if you get that nap mixed up and one piece is upside down and one's the right way round, you can sometimes find that they'll look like they've, there's a slight colour difference because one will pick up the dark and one will pick up the light. I hope that's not too confusing. Anyway, I digress, as you know I do. Um, but yeah, it's a really sweet little coat. It's got a little inverted back pleat here that's been stitched down. It's got lots of top stitching along the sleeves and on the um, raglan, um, ra yeah, the raglan arms here as well. Um, and then I've still got my um, tailor's tacks in for my buttonholes as well, um, which I won't be making, but I have saved them on there for, for button placement. It's got these little mock pockets as well on the front. So it's a really sweet coat. On the inside, we've got some bias binding around the neck, which worked well for me this time, and also some binding along the hem here just to make that lovely and neat. So hopefully you'll enjoy making this along with me. Um, and we'll get started. So um, let's talk about the fabric that I've chosen and then we'll get started from there. So I've actually chosen this um, lovely, more threads, um, so some lovely um, wool from Cool Crafting. This is the 100% wool from Cool Crafting and this is the amount that I chose which was um, specified as being sufficient to make Luna's wool coat. I believe it's in denim colourway, I'll check that. 
and I'll pop a note on. I should have checked before I started the video, but you know what it's like, you start to procrastinate and then if you're not careful, you end up going off and doing everything else instead. So we've chosen this lovely blue um, wool here. And the reason I chose that is because I wanted it to coordinate with Luna's dress here. Um, and I think those two go together really nicely. And so what I've got is I've got a little bit of spare fabric left over here from her dress, from a, um, is it a fat quarter? It might've been a fat quarter or a half that I'd got. Um, and so I'm gonna use that. So on the practice um, coat, we've got this bias binding on the neckline here and on the bottom. So I'm going to make that in the same fabric as the dress so that it then coordinates um, through for that. You're also gonna need um, eight buttons. And if you've got a cool crafting kit for Luna's um, coat, rather than just ordering the felt, um, then you, I'd got buttons already and things that I thought I could use. So um, I'm trying to use up some of my stash and, and, and not keep, keep accumulating all these things. Um, but the other thing I wanted to say is that I wanted to say a thank you to Jan Franklin because Jan actually um, bought me a coffee. Thank you very much, Jan, for, for my one of my other videos that she enjoyed. Um, and she didn't specify what I could buy with it uh, as to go towards a kit. So in this case, this has gone towards this felt um, that I ordered and picked up in December. So I'm, I'm keen to get started. I think it's going to look really lovely in, in the... Um, in the in the wool coat and Luna's gonna look fab wearing it. So let me stop waffling on about it and we'll get on to talking about the fabric and how we prep and getting our, our coat made. So as I've just said, um, felt doesn't have a right side and a wrong side. The other thing is with felt is it doesn't fray. It might get a little bit fluffy on the edges, but it doesn't fray. So that does mean that for small details like the collar here, that's actually a raw edge there. So they can I can split those two bits of seam allowance apart and you can see there's a raw you know that's the, the it's not been sewn and then turned out these front sections here have been turned out um but and then these pockets are a folded edge but these little bits here again are a raw edge and that's different if you are making this in a different fabric so you would need to um, sew these right sides together and then turn them out if you were making this in a different fabric but with it being a raw edge you can do so you just need to be aware of that for your um um fabric choices and again here but we're going to just carry on talk about felt otherwise this um, video is going to be too long and I think most of you will possibly buy the remake kit um, and then use that but it's going to be useful to have the practice coat here I think just to be able to keep showing you which bits we're working on and how thing, things go together so we'll keep that within within reach. So with our felt here, the first thing that I'm going to do is because um, with it being a dressmaking item rather than a character, there's going to be quite a lot of pressing. So the first thing that I would suggest you do is take this felt over to your sewing machine and press it with a, with a steam iron. Um, put some steam on it as well because that does help with um, wool. It will get these little creases out that we've, we've already got anyway. And, and whilst you're doing that, just have a little look at your, your felt as well because... There's actually, whilst there's no right side and wrong side to, to felt fabric, and you can use either. What I've noticed about this piece, let me just put that lining to one side, um, is that there's a lot more of this white mottling on this side than there is on this side. And so I'm going to use this slightly less mottled side as my right side, because I think I prefer the look of that. Than I do so for, for here example you can see there's some clumps of bigger clumps of white just here and I think that if I put that on to on my um, garment I think that that might be slightly noticeable if we have a, a part like that and say a part like that where there's more mottling and there's less I think it might might make it look a bit more um, obvious so that's just one thing to bear in mind so I'm going to take this over to my ironing board and I'm going to iron it now what I will do is I'm just going to measure it first you don't need to do this but I'm just going to measure it first and just see if there is any shrinkage caused when it is actually pressed and the reason why we're pressing it now is that once we've cut it out if we press some of the um, pattern pieces afterwards but not others some may shrink slightly and others may not. And so whenever I'm working with um, a fabric like this or with the cotton, I always make sure I go over it first with um, a nice um, warm iron. Again, be careful with wool, we don't want it to go shiny. Um, use a press cloth if you've got um, a press cloth. You know that I use um, my Silk Organza um, press cloth and, and really love that. Um, I was thinking about, let me know if anybody would be interested in buying one of these rather than having to source it and make it. Because I did think I could make some and then 
um, I do personalise them as well with a little little name on them. So if, if anybody fancies one of those, just let me know. It's just a thought I had whilst I was doing something else the other day. Anyway, I digress. So press it with a steam iron before you start cutting out because if you press it afterwards and there is any shrinkage, again, you might not be using cool crafting wool, you might be using something out of your stash, then it may shrink and you want that shrinkage out of the way before you start cutting out. So let me go off and do that and I'll come back to you. Okay, I've just popped back mid ironing because I think it is shrinking slightly. So I just wanted to show you on here. So if I just measure this part here, then we're at 27.5 centimetres on the um, width of it. So, and then if I go on to this part here where we have ironed it, we're 27.2 centimetres. So there is a slight amount of shrinkage. It's minimal, but it's still there. And also when you're talking about a garment sort of as small as this, you know, losing best part of half a centimetre can almost change the difference between your um, your seam allowance because that's only quarter of an inch anyway isn't it and quarter of an inch is half a centimetre so I, w I would strongly recommend that when you're working with any natural fibre like wool or whatever give it a nice um, warm and strong um, press not too hot because you're not trying to you're not trying to damage the fabric and you don't want to make it shiny um, but I would recommend that you do that. So I was really pleased that I've told you to do that. So I'll carry on now and finish off ironing the rest of the fabric. Okay, so I've cut out my pattern pieces. Um, now on a couple of these, you actually have to cut out four. Now, for the majority of the fabric, we can have it in half and we'll have a look at how economical that is. But on the pattern pieces, like the two sleeves and the two um, front face of fronts and front facing I've actually cut those two pieces out twice so that you can see that they're exactly the same pattern pieces but that just means that I don't miss anything when I'm actually putting it onto my fabric so again that's something that you can do anything that is 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 just cut one on the fold that's fine anything that's cut two I've just left as it is um, such as this little side panel here and the collar so we so those ones I've just just cut the one pattern piece out as normal so it's just the um sleeve i'm not trimmed that one off um and the also the front of the front facing i have traced those two those pieces out twice and you may wish to do the same just so that when you're placing your pattern pieces you don't forget and cut one out and think oh yeah i've got loads of fabric here spread everything out and then suddenly realize that you've missed a pattern piece so that, that would be my top tip. As always, I've um, traced the pattern pieces out using, in this case, I've got some tracing paper from a local um, craft store, and um, that works really well. If you've not got any of that to hand, you can use um, baking paper as well. That works really well as tracing paper too. So I've just popped um, tracing paper over the, over the patterns in the back of the book and traced those off. There is a video, um, another video of mine in my series, if you go and have a look, that tells you how to trace patterns off if you've not done it before. It's just like you do it at school, but sometimes people like a bit of a refresher. So the next thing that we're going to do then is look at placing our pattern pieces onto our fabric. Now, as I've said, I want to use this slightly darker, um, less mottled side of my fabric as being my right side. So I need to remember that um, and we can follow that through. So on here... Let's have a look and see how far we get if we just put it straight across, because you know I like to be economical with my fabric. So let's put the edges together. We've got a nice fold. We don't have to worry too much about getting it straight because it is um, it is felt, so therefore there's no there's no sort of directional north or south aspect to it. it can, you can go freestyle on this one, folks. Um, but let's take our pattern pieces and just start to put those on. So we need to make sure that they're on the top and that we've got room for all of the edges. So that's that one. We've got another one here. And I do like to try and put things that are straight lines together because there doesn't need to be a gap between any of this so we can um, use that to our best effect as well. Have we got enough for the sleeve just on there? We might just have enough for a sleeve along there. Another front panel here for the coat, so put those right up. Yes, we've got plenty here, haven't we? So again, let's put down the little wool coat 
sections here. Again, try and use this all economically because I know I've seen quite a few people have, have had, had spare felt and they've been able to cut out more using other pieces. So let's just move these along. We'll fit the collar in just there, I think. The other thing that I would suggest as well here is, is if I pop this along, I need to just trim this piece off. Let me just go and do that. Hold on one second. Right, apologies for that. I should have done that before. So when we put these onto here, we can see that we've still got a decent amount of fabric left here. Now, rather than have two skinny strips left over, I'd rather have one bigger piece. So what I'm going to do is I am going to move this fold across. So let's put these pieces on here. And I'm, I might still find a better way of laying these out so that we're using as, as much felt as possible. Or as little felt as possible, so we've got enough to save. So let's move those along. Those can fit in somewhere else. So let's move this along here. And suddenly, maybe you can say that this bit here, if I put um, something underneath it, I've got a little tag here. Put that underneath it so you can see the edge of the fabric, look. So we've got the edge of the fold is here. And then the edge of the fabric here. So suddenly we've got a much bigger space that we can use um, for another project rather than those two skinny little strips. So that's just something just to bear in mind. Obviously, I might need to just do a bit of manoeuvring just to make sure that I'm not skimping too much. And and you don't want to spoil the boat for saving a halfpenny worth of tar. It's not. It's just not worth it, is it? So we just need to just make sure that we've got things laid out as best as we can do. And it is a little bit of a jiggle sometimes, but again, a little bit of Tetris first thing in the morning isn't a bad thing, is it? The other thing that you can do as well is if, you're, if you've got a little bit more time, is you can actually lay these out flat and then draw around them with a chalk pencil. Because in that way then there's quite often ways that you can, you can do things that will then save you even more fabric and more felt. So those are fine there. A little bit more room up there, so let's put that one up there. It doesn't matter that it's going to go straight, straight on up, oh, straight, going to go on the diagonal a little bit, that's okay. And this one here will perhaps fit in just there too. And that's fitting up against the coat. Back. So you're just trying to just use as much as you can do in order to make it fit really nicely. Use that one there because then the collar can come down here and that can slot in, can't it then? We've got a little bit in there, put that that way. And then we've got this one here. So in actual fact, I feel we've got plenty. We've got a nice section here that we can use for something else. Um, but hopefully that's just useful. I mean, this is the thing with felt. You can just put it anywhere you like. So, you know, just carry on with that. Um, I'm just going, to, just going to pin these on in place now um, once I'm happy with those. And then we'll look at getting these cut out. So make sure when you're pinning that both of your edges are even. That You've not got one that's slightly prouder of the other. And because these seam allowances are included on this pattern piece, you can put one, one right up to the next and then just do one snip between the two and you'll cut both pieces out. So I'm just going to attach these to the fabric. And if your pins don't go through first time, just give your pin a little spin in your fingers as you're putting it through. And that will then just help it just get, just divide the fibres basically so that it'll go through. So that's one piece pinned on. I'll carry on doing the rest. I'm sure you know about pinning, so I'm not going to let make you watch me on that. But um, you can see, hopefully, see what I've been been doing. So let's get let me get on with that. So this one is my final layout that I've agreed on. Uh, as I say, I've, I feel I've used as much as I can do. Now, all of these small scraps here, I'm going to save because I do something called wool applique as well, which I love. And this 100% wool is perfect for that. So any small scraps like this, I will save. And if you want to have a look at um, wool applique, have a look at my wool um, Lovebirds 
cushion that I've got on a, um, a video for that I've done that talks about wool applique because if you've got off cuts as well and you fancy doing something small, um, different with them and they're not large enough to use for pieces of um, garments then that's that's a really lovely way to extend your craft and to try something new. So I'll just point you in the direction of that video. If I can, I'll link it up here for you so that you can um, find it easily. But yeah, have a little browse and see what you can see on the on, on my channel. So these are all ready now to cut out. So I'm just going to cut out. Now, the one thing that I'm going to say about cutting out with felt is that you do need to be careful. If you do lots of small snips when you're cutting, you can get quite a jagged edge. So when you're using your scissors or if you're using a rotary cutter, just be careful to use quite a large, um, let me get a pair of scissors to show you. So get quite a large pair of cutting shears and do long, smooth cuts coming right up into the um, angle of the um, scissor, scissor blades so that you're then cutting very nicely as you go. That way you should have a nice smooth line and it'll stop you keep feeling like you need to nibble a little bit off all the time to make it nice and smooth. That's certainly what I found when I was cutting out this one anyway. Um, so that's what I would do. I would just um, take your time, nice long snips. So let's cut out this piece together and just show you. So what I'm trying to get you to, have, so again, you can see I've butted these pieces right up. So I'm gonna cut right through the middle, making sure not to cut any paper off either piece of pattern. Because if you cut the paper off the pattern, each time you do that, you're gonna make this pattern piece smaller and we don't want to do that. So I'm going to find my way in the middle. The blades just lift the fabric slightly. I'm resting the blade against the cutting mat and cutting down onto there. And I'm doing one snip down along that edge. And then moving my blades along. So you're doing one nice kind of snip. And you want this nice smooth edge. If you've got smaller scissors and you're trying to cut out let's see if I got, I've got some and you're going snip 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 just with the with just with the, the the very edge of the blade you could get little jagged edges I can't see anything on here where I have because I think I've needed it neatened it all up um but but that was my experience so nice smooth long long um cuts and that should help you get a better effect Okay, so we've got all of our pieces cut out now and there's a few things that I'm, I'm going to ask you to mark. Um, we're going to use our snips or our little, um, whatever little blades of your scissors and we're going to mark our little notches. Now on here, you've only got a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So you need to make sure that when you cut your notches that you don't go further than what the seam allowance is going to be. So you're only going to do an eighth of an inch on these, just a very, very, just a couple of millimetres just to be able to find you that reference point and and felt is very very obvious on its um cut when you've got that little cut into one side so we're going to go across and do all of those so there's one cut there on the neck there's a cut here on the back of the center back of the coat there might be useful just to put a little nick at the bottom of the coat as well just on that center join just there just a small one another one just here on the neck and then I think that's it. Oh no, we've got on the side fronts, we need to mark where the pockets go. So where's the side front here? We need two little nicks just here because this is our, for our pocket placement. So one there and one there. And as you can see, just use the blade. Don't go like that to mark your notches because if you nudge or you slip or it's just a little bit pressure than you think, you, you run the risk of cutting right into your piece. So always just use the little, just use the point of your blades just to do your little nick and that, that'll be sufficient but it just you won't run the risk then of potentially ruining your garment. The other thing I want to talk about as well is tailor's tacks. Now you know I like my tailor's tacks for how to mark my um, pattern piece, uh, reference points on the pattern and they look like this. Now what I suggest is because there's six and obviously you can do all 12 if you want to but these are going to line up on top of each other the front facings and the, fa and the front. So if you just mark it on one of these pieces rather than both, then you should be fine. So I'm going to do that now. So let me find a oh, squeaky chair, sorry. Let me get a needle and we'll get some um, contrast thread. There's one thing we're going to talk about soon is what thread we're going to use. Let me use this light blue because that'll show up nicely, won't it? So we get a nice long piece of thread. And we get an ordinary sewing needle. And we just thread our needle. 
use a threader if you need it. And we want it double, but we don't want to put a knot in the end. So we want our thread double, but not a knot. The first place, now it doesn't say to do this, but the first place where I'm going to suggest that we do a, a little um, tailor's tack is at the bottom of this pleat here. Just so that that stays in the right place for us and that we know where we want to sew down to. So I'm just going to do two. Now normally I do north to south and east to west, but here I'm just doing east to west twice or west to east if you're watching and you can see which way I'm doing, but you know you know, you know, know what I'm saying. And just do a little um, tailor's tack there. That will just mark the end of that for when we're sewing so we know where to stop. The other thing that I would do as well is, do we want to do that? Yes, let's just do a quick tailor's tack to one side and we're going to measure it. Where's my seam gauge gum? So what I'm going to suggest we do is that on the back here, you can see this one's not quite as straight as I would like it, but that's why it's a test garment, is that you've got some top stitching that goes down here and if you see there's a line across and it goes down to a point to the bottom of the stitching. Well, we've just marked that point there, which is the bottom of the of the um, pleat. But what I would suggest is that we just mark slightly up from there because that will tell us when we need to start and angle in for our pleat top stitching. So on here, let's have a look and see, half a centimetre to three quarters of a centimetre is enough. So I'm going to come out half a centimetre directly across from the bottom of the pattern and then I'm going to go up half a centimetre. So that's going to give me a little mark just there. So that's what I've just drawn. So I just came out half a centimetre here and then I've gone up half a centimetre and done a dot. And I'm going to do it so that they're not level because we don't want them level because that's where I'm going to angle in. And that's going to give me a little reference point just to be able to get that lovely and neat on the back there. Again, if you're not bothered, you don't have to do this step, step. But again, it's just things that you learn when you've done, done a garment once and you think, well, actually, let's just do that. And because I want that to be quite precise, then I've just gone through my felt completely rather than go in and out on a stitch. So I've just done that. So you've actually got two tailor's tacks there on mine, one at the bottom of the dotted line for the pleat and one half centimetre across and half a centimetre up. That'll mark that on there. And then we're going to go on to here then now. So again, to do our tailor's tacks. So on these, I'm going in on the first side and then I'm going across. I'm not differentiating between the star, which is the button placement, and the dash at this moment in time. And it depends whether you want to do it right way for boys and uh, sorry right on top for boy girls or left on top for boys but at this stage here let's just mark them across like this and this will just give us enough of a marking just to know where those button placements are so that's one done to the next one so we go in on one end we come out on the other as one stitch and then we leave a tail oops a bit longer than that claire leave a tail I was forgetting my thread was shorter okay like this move that one out of the way so you can see so we've got this light blue tail just here and then we take another stitch over exactly the same place in this case normally I alter the orientation leave a tail and we're going to snip through the tail and snip our threads off and that leaves these fluffy marks but if you look on the other side it's marked exactly where those pattern placement markings are so let's just go down and do some more of those so let me do those and as I say because we've got the two fronts you might only have cut out one pattern piece but going through four at one time isn't going to be tricky so I do them two at a time but I'm going to not do this bit because that's two and that's two it'll all make sense honestly it all will just trust me <laughs> trust in the process she says so let me just thread this needle up and I'll do these and I'll come back to you because I'm trying to keep my videos a little bit shorter so that they're not so um, cumbersome for you to watch. And you've already seen me do tailor's tacks before. If not, then I think there is a video on my channel as well on how to do tailor's tacks in the Skill Builder series. OK, I'll be back to you in a minute. OK, so that's all of those marked on there. So as before, we take our pins out. We ease our pattern away from the edge of where we've been hold those on. And if you need to, just put your finger on those threads just to hold them down so they don't get pulled out with your pattern piece. 
I'm keeping my pattern piece still attached so I know what it is. And then what you do then is separate out the two sets of fabric if you've got two until you've got a little bridge of threads and then you just snip through them. So there's my bridge of threads. Make sure I don't pull it all the way through and just snip through. Oh, missed one thread. There we go. And then gently down to the next ones. As I say, just be careful you don't go all the way through. And then again, slightly lower here. And what you're left is with is these little tufty parts on the back here, which are just marking where those um, threads are and where, where your marks are, but it's gone through all of those places. If some of these feel a little bit long, then you can always just trim them off if you want to, so that they don't get in your way. One or two of these are a little bit longer than we perhaps need now, but if you do them too short the first time when you pass through the fabric, then you're going to pull them out more often than not. Ask me how I know. Um, and so... Yeah, just give them a little trim now. We'll just make sure they don't... You don't want them too short because then they might come out while you're just working. And if they do, you'll have to put the pattern piece back on again and redo them. But just for now, that will work that out for there. And then we've just got these two here, haven't we? So let's just undo those pins there. Use these two sides of the pattern pieces away from each other. And we'll see whether that works for us or not when we're coming to do our do coming to do our stitching at the end, our top stitching. Right, okay, so the next thing that I am going to do now is another thing that you know that I like to do, and that is to mark which is the right side and the wrong side so that we don't get them mixed up. Now, if your felt is like this yellow one, this yellow one didn't have a right side or a wrong side, it was both both fine but on this one when we were speaking earlier we know that I've got the right side on the outside here it's slightly smoother looking than the fabric on the inside which is a little bit more mottled so I am going to put a pin just in the center of mine like this and that will tell me that that's the right side that I'm going to use so let me just go on and do that with some of the other pieces I mean you can still attach your pattern piece to your fabric piece so that you know where you are. Let's open this one up as well. Oops, got to touch on the bottom. So again, when we open these out, I'm going to pull them around like that so that I pull them out so I've got the both two together. What you're looking for is this curve to follow across on the top there. So this is the two front pieces. If you have one where you've got like, like that, you know you've got one transposed and then you need to turn it over. So you should have two mirrored copies where the neckline is a nice swoop across the front. Let me just, I won't be working on the bottom bit just here, so let me just put a, a piece, a little pin on there. And then once I've marked them up, I just put one pin in just to hold it together to the pattern piece so that I know what I'm working with. So let me just go through and mark these, and I'd suggest you do the same with yours um, if you need to. And then we'll come back and then we'll look at getting started on the sewing and what we need to do first. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is um, colour of threads because that can make a huge difference to the way that your project looks. On the test garment I'd got a yellow that was pretty much spot on the same colour as the as the felt, maybe slightly darker, but um, that matched really, really well um, and isn't too noticeable in terms of the the stitch. I mean the stitching's very sorry correct yourself Claire the stitching is really noticeable but it's not a contrast um, so that blends in quite nicely and that will be more forgiving than if you have a contrast thread so if you had something like so like on this blue felt I'm going to use if you use this pale blue for example when we can see from the tailor tack can't we how that really stands out so if if that's the kind of look you want to go for then obviously that's a, that would be a good choice. I mean, you could use a red, you could use a purple, you could use orange, you could use any colour you wanted. I mean, I've just used coordinating shades of, of blue and grey on here. Likewise, the light grey as well will still give you some contrast, but won't be too, um, too noticeable. I'm hoping you can see the difference here. I'll hold it up to the light in a second and, and you can see it a little bit better. Um, I've also got this light, this this denimy blue colour that I've worked that has worked really well for me before when I've been working with this it's not as dark as a navy blue um but it's just got those kind of tones in that just just blend really nicely and then I've also got this deep purple as well which 
um, is a grey purple and that matches really well. So you could argue that you could go with any of these really um, in terms of giving you a, a, a good finish. Let me hold this up for you so that you can just see. I'm hoping it's not going to unroll, unravel everything. So those are the options that I'm considering at the moment. If you're doing dressmaking and you want your colour to blend, then they would argue that you should go a shade darker. So you would go perhaps for this shade rather than this one. Um, but I want you to be able to see the stitching on the wool coat that I do. Hopefully it's going to be good enough that um, we. I'm not going to regret this decision. The other thought was that when I'm put pairing it with the dress, that the stitching then will also complement the dress as well. So I think I'm going to go with this um, dark grey and hoping that I'm not going to live to regret it. <laughs> so have confidence, Claire. That's what we need to do, isn't it? Have confidence that it's all going to come together. So let me just get my machine set up with this dark grey and then we'll be ready to talk about starting stitching. Just one thing I was going to say. If you are a beginner, um, stitcher I would strongly recommend that you go with a coordinating thread so if I was a beginner I would definitely go with this one here which I think is dark enough that it doesn't show up too much um, but not too light that it's going to show up every imperfection in my stitching so you know and by imperfection I just mean if you get a jolt or um, sometimes like on this one here you see there some of the stick got stuck on the hump there over that thick seam and so my stitches have gone really small where it got stuck and then I've gone long again and that's something that I'm going to try and avoid doing on my final garment and likewise again here there's a slipped stitch there I don't quite know why but that's a double length stitch just one in the middle of the whole run um, and I have got ways that I can change that um, I can just put a little stitch through it and then anchor it down and I have done that before when I've been doing something halfway through and it just makes it look like a, an ordinary stitch but that's something just to be aware of. Slip stitches often are, are a, a sign that they've perhaps got an incorrect needle in so I'll double check what needle I've got in as well and if it's a 70 I might switch it up to an 80 because it just needs to have that little bit more stability, I think, for going through the felt. Um, especially there, because we've got two, two layers for here. And then two layers for the front and the other. So it's going through six layers all in one all in one place, just, just here. So that was why it was just struggling a little bit. Anyway, let me, I digress, as you know. But let me just carry on and get my machine set up and we'll be back. So I have just popped a tiny, tiny scrap of felt in my machine because I don't want to, um, to um, waste anything bigger than theirs. Um, I'm just going to just do a few stitches just to see how that looks on my fabric and this is a good way of testing stitch length as well as the colour of the thread. Now it's, it's quite noticeable so I'm going to have to be brave but that's how that looks on there because once I've, once I've started I can't go back but hopefully you can see that quite nicely on there as well. I need to just adjust the lighting. Hold on one second. Okay, I think I've got that sorted. So the first thing we're going to work on is these two little bits of wool coat here, which is the um, welt pockets. And what we're going to do with those is we're going to take, remove the pattern piece and of course keep your pattern pieces together. I just use these Ziploc bags for mine. They work quite well, keeps them nice and flat. So keep that out of the way. And then we've marked which is the right side, which I've just taken out. That looks like the right side to me. And we're going to fold them with the wrong sides together along this long edge here. So that's your shorter edge and that's the longer edge. So you're going to fold them along the longer edge so that the ends are together. And then so that the wrong sides are together as well. So I think I said that bit. And then just pop a couple of pins in away from the edge. Do the same with the other one. This is where I say it's it's good to have your right side and your wrong side marked so you can remember where you are. So these are the two little oblongy pieces of fabric that we've got. And these are going to be this bit on just here, look. So what we're going to do now is we're going to stitch them like here onto this side front panel. So let me just... Um, show you that. So let's get this side front panel which is this long chisel shaped piece and take the pin out, pattern piece away. I have to move my 
sit with a lot of bags so I'm not reaching across you all the time. And I have got a very squeaky chair, I don't quite know why it's creating like that. Now what we're going to do is just open these out so that the right sides are together. And also by having them in this angle here, we know we've got a right and a left. If we'd got them both that way, we know we've got two identical pieces and we don't want that. We want to have one, one going up and one going down to form this point. And I know I'm right because I've got my pins in marking the right side. We should have two snips in the side. There's one just there and there's the other one. So again, that's right. And then we're going to put the folded edge. We've not done anything other to these. other. Than, I will press these actually. So do press them with your with your iron just to make sure that Plugging that in again, sorry. Just put, press these with your iron just to, so they hold their shape. It will. It, it doesn't sound like a lot of difference, but it will just flatten down that fold and just make them sit better. So we're just going to do that now. Um, I'm just going to take us over to the ironing board and just press those two flat and I'll be back. So actually we've got one pressed here and one not pressed there. I can see a difference here. Hopefully you can too. This one looks a lot bouncier than this one does. So I'm just going to pop those pins back into this one. I don't press them with the pins in because sometimes that can actually make an indentation in the felt that then won't come out again. So let me just go and press this one and then we'll be ready. Okay, so we're just going to locate our little notches. Which side are they on? They're on this side here, this long side. So let's find the bottom one first and put the bottom open edge against that first notch. And then we're going to reposition this pin now to go through all three layers, the, two, the folded two of the pocket and the one of the side of the coat. And then do the same with the other one. The other one should just line up so there's my notches and there's the open ends of that straight in. And what we're going to do now is, let me find my awl, which is always missing, is we're just going to sew here close to the edge here so you not so much that it folds that one of these up but just across here and then we're going to stop now what i did find is that actually you're better off sewing from the folded edge across than you are from this bottom edge because those can fold but also on one of mine the little notch folded under and made it messy as well which i didn't like so we're not going to reverse sew backwards and forwards here we're just going to start and go through and then we're going to take the threads through to the other side and tie them off and i'll show you how we do that in a minute so let me get my machine and adjust your angle and then we'll be able to show you what to do so i'm just going to use a straight stitch just got the ordinary presser foot on and we're just lining up the centre of our presser foot here across to the edge of the thing. We're going to hold on to our threads as we start to sew. Just keeping that nice and straight. And that's one done. There's our stitches. Let's do the other one. Let me just show you that. Let's just do the other one now. Just trying to keep them about equidistant so that you've, they're, they're going to look even. Turn the speed down on your, there we go. There's those two sewn on just nicely there. Let's find our other piece. It's got hidden underneath my machine. And sewing from the folded edge again. Do the same thing, hold on to our keep wanting to turn the work around. There we go, so that one's sewn on as well. Okay, so we take the pins out now. And then what we do with these edges, get a needle. what I do is I just evaluate how far away from the edge we are here because I might put a, a stitch in the middle first. So almost make a mock sewing machine stitch just to make sure that it's nice and neat, especially with this contrast thread. 
Let me just thread my needle up with the end top at the end here. And just pull that thread through just to make sure that that's nice and tight. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to do a little stitch just on the same line as I was, just going in through the work. And then I'm going to come up again on the edge of the work here, just on the edge of the piece that we're stitching. And then I'm going to go directly in on that hole again. And that just neatens it off just on that edge. So it just mocks. So even though I wasn't quite far enough across, I'm not going to worry about that. I take the stitch threads to, through to the back. Give them a tug so that they're nice and tight. And then I'm just going to do a double knot on them. Well, actually, I'm going to do three because I tend to do three. I don't know why, I just do. One for insurance, let's say it that way. Oops. And then once I've got my three stitches on, I'm just going to leave about half a centimetre of thread just so that it's not going to come undone too readily and then <coughs> knot it off. Now, the end of this is actually going to get sewn into the seam. So those, these ones here, I'm, I am just going to snip off. You can um, tie those off as well if you want to. I don't think we need to because we're going to go straight across the top of that row of stitching anyway with our next row when we sew the side bits on. But this one again, oops, sticking to me. Just thread my needle again with the top thread. And then this one's not too bad, so I'm just going to go straight in over the edge of that one. And I think it just stops putting, helps to stop putting any pressure. It just finishes off that row of stitching just nicely. And once they're through to the back, I'm just going to do my three knots. So I'm going to do this for this side and then I'm going to do the same on the other side so that it's finished off the same way. And then I'll come back to you and we'll do the, we'll sew the next bit on. Okay, so this is what you should be left with now is these two little folds with the folded edge away from the cut edge of the, into the, the centre of the piece. The two pointed pieces together so that we know we've got a left and a right. And then we, because we now have marked our right side, we can take our pins out marking our right side of our fabric because we don't need those anymore because we know the pockets go on the right side. So the next thing that we need to then take is the one of the side front sections. Now I'm going to suggest that you use the one that you have tailored tacked because that will put your buttonhole markings on the top of your fabric for you. So if you use the other one like I did on this one, I had used the mark, the mark fabric on the facings and then I had to go back in to mark again, just follow the marks through onto the other side for the buttons. But on this one, if we use the ones with the facings already, then we'll be fine. So let's have it right side up. And then we're going to put this so that it's fitting. Get this right. So we have those two. So separate your two side pieces out. you see what I've done there? Not really. Let me move across a bit more so it's just trying to, I'm trying a different camera angle and just trying to make sure that you can see properly. So what I've done, I've got, I've got the two right sides facing upwards of my centre front with the markings on them. And all I did was move my two side pieces apart because what we're going to do now is fold this one over on top here, matching up the bottom. So the hem edge to pin in there we're then going to match up the top now just be aware that at the top here your two edges aren't going to be level I don't know if you can see that but this one here is slightly prouder of that one and that is correct just lay it along it's because when you fold it back on itself like this that bit then will fold under and make a nice smooth edge so it is correct, it isn't an error, and you've not made an error. That is the way it's supposed to be. So just lay it on top and it'll just match perfectly. So that's one ready to go. Let's do the same with the other one. So we've got our centre piece there together. We know we've got a left and a right because of this neckline here. We can see the edges there. And I'm going to take this other pocket one and fold it straight over and then put that on top and then pin that one as well. So match it at the hem first. And because we know we're working with the right sides together now, we can take the pin out 
marking the right sides together. Give your pin a little twist if it won't go through properly. And then that will just sit on top. I tend to put a pin just before all, and um, the pockets because that you, your machine is going to struggle a little bit getting over those. Or it might do. If you've got a walking foot, you can always use your walking foot. But I'm using mine without so that you see that it can be done without. Okay, so that's our two pieces now lined up. So now we're just going to sew now along here at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Let's get my machine ready. I'm just on a straight stitch here. On a 2.2 length because we're on a construction. And I'm matching it up with the markings on the foot of my, on my bed of my machine. And I am going to reverse at the top and the bottom. So a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back. And then we're just going to start sewing. Try and keep to the correct seam allowance because if you if you take too much of a seam allowance, especially with as many seams as on this garment, your coat will come out too small. So just um, be aware of that. Then have your speed turned down on your machine with working with felt. Needle in your work when you have to stop. And just be aware that you might need to help your machine go over these humps here where the pocket is attached. So just take your time, nice and steady. slightly if you saw mine then and then again just take it nice and it just allows the machine just to cope nicely down the bottom and I'm going to reverse at the bottom here as well let's take this out needle up let's dip my threads nice and neatly we trim those as we go along and just keep it all nice and neat So there you can see the seam going all the way down there. And then if we fold this out, we can see the start of this is starting to come together. And there's our pocket tucked into our seam for our little, little welt pocket. So I'm just going to do the other one now. And then we'll talk about um, pressing these and top stitching them. So now that I've got both of them sewn, we're now going to fold these. So you fold the front the front panel with your tailor's tags back on itself and just finger press that to hold that down. So your seam allowance is going in towards the centre front. So if I go look from this side, then all of that seam allowance is going towards the centre front. And what I want you to do is take this over to your so ironing board and just give it a press with your iron, okay? Um, use, your, use your press cloth if you've got one, just to protect your garment. Now we've started sewing it, put that across and then you can see through it in order to protect it. Let me go and do that and I'll show you what, what it looks like, the difference between the two when it's been pressed and when it hasn't. So here we've got one where it's been pressed nice and flat and how springy this one is still. You're going to get a much better finish on this one when you top stitch it if you have pressed it. So press it and use a little bit of steam um, and it'll just take out that springiness to want to fold in half again because that's now laying really nice and flat and you can see here that seam allowance has been pushed right across. Okay, um, so then <laughs> I'm forgetting myself. Right, so I'll do the one in a second, but what we're going to do now is we're actually going to top stitch along here now for the decorative top stitch. Now, because I'm using a contrast thread, I'm going to extend my stitch length slightly. So at the moment it's on a 2.2, so I'm going to take it up to a 3, and I think that will just give a nice um, top stitch amount and just help the um, the machine go over it all. Um, it's right, my, my brain is thinking about something else. I'm just wondering whether to trim this, this back to get rid of some of this bulk. Um, you could do that if you wanted to. Um, I didn't on the first one. Maybe we might do just, just by the hem a little bit just because of that folding. So I'm just going to trim the a little bit off the hem. Not on the face, not on the side bit, but on the front bit because that's the bit we're going to sew it to. Oops. So just folding one bit back. And just trim it off and also on these pockets in here because that's been held in by the seam don't trim very too much though you only need a little bit just to try and reduce some of that bulk in there Right, 
Okay, so now when we're top stitching, what I like to do is, is choose a place on my press a foot and then that's where I'm going to follow. So in this case, we're wanting to stitch through the seam allowances. So I'm going to stitch it from the hem back up again and I'm going to trace along. Where's my all gone? So I've got a plastic bit here and a metal bit here and I've got a line in between. So, so choose, and if you need to move your needle across so you're using the edge of your press a foot here, you can do. But for me, that should work. Or, no, let's move my needle and then I'll show you how to do it. So. You, on most machines you can move the needle across so I'm moving the needle across right across to number seven which is right across there is that going to catch it yes because whatever distance you use now we've got to remember because we want all of the stitching on all of the coat to be the same distance in all of the places where it's top stitched so that's why it's important to make sure that it's in the right place when you get started. So I'm going to take a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back. And then I'm just going to, I'm tra I, I'm not watching the needle, I'm watching here where the, and I'm using the existing seam line here as my guide and I'm going all the way along that with the edge of the presser foot. And my stitches then from my needle will always fall in the right place. So just take your time as you go over the thicker parts. nice and neat all the way up to the top and then a couple of stitches back and we're done. That was quite nice wasn't it? That'll do. So let me go on and do the other one and get the other one looking exactly the same and I'll come back to you. Okay so we've got two very nicely stitched top stitched um, fronts now. So we're going to put those to one side and we're going to do some little bit of work on the sleeves. So if you find your sleeve pieces, okay so we've got two sets of our sleeve pieces here so let's take off the pattern pieces for those and put those nice and safe. Crinkle, crinkle, sorry. And then what we're going to do is open these out as two pairs of sleeves. So we're going to open them out so we've got the two curved edges are together, not the slanted edge. And that's going to give us our two pairs that we're going to be working with, okay? I know we've got right side up because we've got the pin on here for right side up for each of them. So what we're going to do now is turn one set over so it's on top of each other, match it at the top, and we can use the pins that we've used to mark the right sides because we know that these are right sides together now. And then we're gonna take the other pin and mark down at the bottom here. So we're, we're actually pinning these together now, right sides together, along that longer curved edge. And then what we're going to do next is we are going to stitch from here all the way down here. We're gonna just back tack at the start and at the end just to secure our stitches and do this. This is the top of the seam that goes along the along the sleeve. So let me just show you on here. So we're doing this this seam here now that goes along the top of the sleeve. So back to the machine. Take it. So I've got to just my needle again now. So I've got to remember that I'm at seven and a length three. So make a note of that if you need to. So that's for that. And then take my stitch length back down to 2.2. And we're back to a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So you just started off a little bit of a curve here, so just be aware of that. You know how to work with that. So a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back, and then you're just going to follow your seam allowance. Now, just to say, I did find that whilst my Luna could fit these sleeves on, they were on the snug side. So if you're going to adjust your seam allowance at all, go slightly less than slightly more, because that'll make sure that you've just got a little bit more room um, for your Luna, so so try not to try not to go too to go over the top of your. Don't be too generous in taking your seam allowance. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> match sure those hems match up. And then reverse at the end. Thread 
threads off. And then again, we're going to press these open as well. Now we do want these on the sleeves, back to the test garment. So if I put these two sleeves together, we can see that the top stitching is towards the center of the garment. So it's on that side. So on one side, it's to the right of the seam and to the other, it's on the left of the seam. So just be aware of that. But we don't actually top stitch them. Um, sorry, we, we do top stitch the um, sleeves here. So do be aware of that. We don't stitch them, top stitch them yet on the garment. But um, so just be aware that when you've got them lying on your machine, you want the seam allowances. If you press those both in towards the middle, then that should make sure that you, when you've got them here, side by side you should then have your top stitching on the seat on the right side so let me just go through that again so because the top stitching here goes in towards the center of the garment we need to make sure that you top stitch on the right side so if you top stitch these two sleeves say i've got two sleeves here together and then you get top stitch them both on the same side put the seam allowance towards the right on both of them and top stitch them both on the right side they're then going to be incorrect when you put them up against your garment because you'll have one set of top stitching on the wrong side. So this is where we, again, once I've done this seam, I'm going to press both my seam allowances towards each other and then I'm going to make sure that I top stitch on the correct side, in this case to the right of this one and to the left of, that, of my other sleeve and that will then make sure that those two seam allowances come in together. I hope that makes sense. I'll, I'll, I'll go over it a bit more as we go through. Okay, so this is what I mean. So we've got two sleeves here, and to all intents and purposes, they look exactly the same. But when we turn them over, we can see that I've pushed both of these seam allowances are towards the middle. And when we top stitch them, we're going to top stitch them as well. And that will make sure that when, we've, when we turn them over, you can perhaps see from the bulk, you can feel the seam allowances are going towards different sides. And that will then mean that when we come to stitch it up, it'll be on the on the right on the correct side for us. I know it seems like a lot of detail, and, and you know if you get it wrong, it doesn't matter too much on this one. But if you can get it right, then obviously that's what we want to do, really, isn't it? So I'm going to stitch this one up from the hem so that I'm on the right side for my um top stitching, and I'm going to put my needle up. Needle across to 0 0.7, um, 7.0, and my stitch length up to 3, which was my top stitching settings. And then I'm using the edge of my presser foot now, and I'm just going to do a couple of stitches forward, not go too fast. That's it, and then back, and then nice and steady. If you need to stop, put your needle in your work on top stitching always. So use your needle up down button to press that in. Nice and steady. Go as slow as you need to with top stitching. Top stitching is one of those things that you do get better at the more you practice. But you want a nice regular stitch length on that. The other thing that I forgot to say to you as well is that you will notice as well that when you are working with these pieces, they don't lie flat. Can you see this is lifting up slightly from the cutting board? And that's because there's a curve at the top edge of here it curves away and that's the shaping for over the top of the shoulder um, because it's a raglan sleeve. When we sew it in, we're going to sew it in like that. So that's actually like the sleeve head, if you like. And so what we need to make sure is that we actually keep that curve. Don't try and press this flat because it's not supposed to be flat. It's supposed to have that curve. So again, on this one, this curve's gone out a little bit with it being top stitch, but it'll, it'll come back again because we know that the pattern is set that way. So let me just top stitch this one. And then we'll move on to the next bit. So I've just popped those two sleeves to one side and now we're going to be working with the coat back. So if we take our pattern piece off and put that somewhere safe. I always leave my pattern pieces on to the last minute because I know that that's what I need to work with. We've got our pin mark in our top side so we know that our right side together and we're going to fold it to get, so that the right sides are together and so that these edges here match. Now my pin's going to be in the wrong way, in the, in the way, so I'm going to take that out for now. We've got two notches at the top, so a notch on either side here, so we know when they're on top of each other, we've got this folded in half perfectly. And pop a pin in, and then match up the hem as well. 
and we don't need to pin it right the way down to the hem but we do need to pin it somewhere near the bottom of our tailor's tacks here because that's our marks for where we're going to stitch to can you remember we're going to we're going to stitch down to this first one so we're going to go from our notch here and we're going to stitch all the way down here and we're aiming for this first that the, the um, tailor's tack closest to the fold we put the extra one in if you remember just to help us so just keep your threads out of the way and then we're going to take this back down to a our normal stitch which is a 3.5 needle position and a 2.2 stitch length and then match that up with the middle and I'm going to reverse at the top a couple of stitches reverse and then I'm going to keep my eye always looking down here towards this point here so don't veer off and go to your other tailor tack you want to just go straight down here you can also keep a, the fold of your fabric on the edge of the on your markings on your presser foot and that, um, on your machine bed and that will help you too words have gone wrong this afternoon when I get to the bottom I am going to just do a couple of stitches reverse so that'll hold that nice snip our threads and now because we're at the bottom I'm going to take out the, the tailor's tack at the bottom of the pleat before I do anything else because I don't want to sew those tailor's tacks so just move use something to just move your threads of your other one across out the way because we need those in a minute just make sure you don't pull too many of your fibres for your felt out. And keep them coming. I think that's all we've got. Okay, we'll take the pin out at the bottom now as well. Done with that one. Just make sure. That's it. The threads that keep on giving. So now when we open this up, we've got our seam down the centre back. And what we're going to do is if we turn this back over against the seams at the top, we're going to squish, smoosh that pleat down as equally as possible so that it's flat. And we're going to just go to the machine and just press that. So what you're doing is if I look at that from this end, you're just smooshing that. You're not pushing it to one side or to the other. You're just literally smooshing it down on itself so that the center of the so there's an equal amount of fabric, a fold, either side. And that's what you want to do all the way along. So just make sure that looks nice and straight and just take it to your machine and just give it a press to hold it flat because you know that that really does help. Okay, so here's mine now. You can see that's sitting nice and flat for me now. It's had a nice press. And the other thing that I've made sure is that I've pulled these seams apart, this, this side seam apart, so there's nothing folded extra in the middle because we want that to be nice and central. So what? So the reason why we put this other tailor's tack in is because we're going to sew down to the side here until we get to that point there, and then we're going to angle in until we go to the bottom of the bottom stitch in the bottom of the pleat. That's going to give us the point before we then come back up again to aim for the center of this point here, and then straighten up to come back up again. Because what we're going to be doing is we are top stitching this here. And can you see I didn't mark mine on the first one and I've got a little bit more fabric on one side of that seam than I have on the other. If you don't want to do a point and you want to go down and just do a box and just come back up again, you can do, that's perfectly fine. This is just what Sarah Peel, the author, did in the, in the book. So that's why I'm copying that way and giving you a little tip to how to get that even. Oops, sticking together. So let's go back onto our top stitching settings. So that's needle position seven, and our top stitch length is three. And I'm going to use the edge of my presser foot against the center seam here that we stitched already. And I'm now aiming for the center of this tailor's tack here. I'm not going to, am I going to reverse start and stop? No, because we don't need to. So just take it nice and steady. Turn your machine speed down if you need to, just so it slows you down. And figure it, so you've got your needle in your work, so you're ready for your pivoting. So we're going to slow down until we're just in the centre. One more, I think. Okay, 
and now we're just going to angle now towards the bottom of that pleat I'm probably just going to do two stitches one two I think that'll be enough and then because I've done two stitches there when I come and aim towards this side here I'm going to do two stitches too so let's get that right so let's do one two I need to do one more I think Too many. Just round it back. That's better. Okay. And so we're just doing down the side here. So remember, with pivoting, you need leave your needle in the work. You lift up your presser foot, and then you can you can spin your work round. It holds it anchored for you whilst you just manoeuvre and find your angle. And then once you're ready, you put your presser foot back down again, and then you start sewing towards the end point again. I probably could have done with one more stitch right because I'm doing this as top stitching I'm actually going to undo this and do this again but let me just show you what I've tried to do I, I, I needed one more stitch I should have gone back and done that another stitch just there further down and that would have given me the three and then when I came back here it would have been right so I'm just going to unpick this and do this again so I won't be a second hold on a quick tip when you are unpicking try and unpick from the wrong side of your fabric so from the inside of your garment because in this case if we pick any fibers up that, that are getting in the way we don't want to snag the, the fibers on the front of the garment we want to if, if we're gonna if we are going to snag any we want them to be on the inside of the garment so whenever i'm doing my unpicking i always try and work on the side of the garment that's not going to be seen at the time it doesn't take long just use the point just to get under the stitch and then I use the back of it of my quick unpick just to lift it up and take it out being careful not to pull on the fibres. If you've got a particularly stiff stitch just pull on your thread and it'll lift it up so that you can get under a bit of a, a thread. Can you see how it just pulls it up a little bit more? So it just so sometimes when the, if the stitches are really tight or really embedded you can struggle to get at them so just by pulling on that lead thread you can then just get underneath to lift those up. Okay, let me just get, I'm nearly finished. <laughs> the other thing to say is that felt is really forgiving as well when you're unpicking. So just be aware of that as well because um, you, 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 cannot, you, you, you don't necessarily see it and you can soon just rub your fibres and just ruffle those fibres up again and it'll cover over where you have unpicked. Um, if you were sewing this with the cotton, again, just be, just be mindful to be careful of not catching any, any of your... Um, fibers if you were sewing this with a leather or a vinyl you've only got one chance to get it right remember because once you've made those holes they're going to stay there all the time but on felt we're pretty forgiving so right let's have a go around two and see how we get on so a couple of stitches so nice and steady and i need to remember i'm doing three down to the point once i get to my pivot point so i think there put my needle in so I'm going to angle down at a 45 degree angle and do one, two, three. And of course my machine decided to do four, so I just reverse that. And then I'm going to aim for my next tailor's tack and do three stitches again. One, two, three. And then I'm now going to follow up the side of here and that should be about right. I'm much happier with that right again you have to just work to your tolerance level so I'm happy with that and if I take out these tailors tacks just here just pull those threads out remember if they won't come cleanly then sometimes you just have to give them a little snip but that is within my tolerance level now whereas it wasn't before so I'm quite happy with that hopefully you can see okay so we're on to the next stage now and the next stage is to be laying our sleeves onto our back. So we're going to have the right side of our back up and we're going to take one of our sleeves and we want to make sure that this top stitching is towards the back. So when we lay that on top, just fold it back on yourself and you can see where the seam line is, which is this one here. 
and then we can see where the top stitching is there. So I'm happy with that. We're going to match that seam point at the top and pop a pin in. And then we're going to then match this seam point down the bottom here where the little angle is for under the arm and put a pin in there. And then we're going to just stitch this. So we're going to take our machine back down to our ordinary stitching, which is 2.2, and then you've got position 3.5. There's lots of to in and fro with your stitches, but if you're if you're not used to doing that, it's quite a good way of, of actually learning and getting familiar with that. So a couple of stitches forward. So we do reverse and, and cast off with this needle in our work. Make sure that our seams are on top of each other. I'll turn my speed down off my top stitching. And then get ready to reverse at the end. Stick our threads. So when you're sewing on an angle like this, you will finish past that point there. See where the angle changes there? You will finish past that, the end of my stitching is here, and the points there, that is correct because you're finishing a quarter of an inch in from that pointed edge. So let's just fold that one back. And then we're going to now take our other sleeve and we can see the top stitching here. We're going to pin this one on again so that the top matches for the neckline. And then so the bottom points here, they match too. Pop a pin in. And then just the way that we're working, but I'm, I'm going to be folding over. So let's just have a quick test and we can see the top stitching is towards the back. So we know that's correct as well. So let's put the needle up. And I'm going to be working the other way this time. Starting back down here. That's a bit too much. A couple of stitches up and back just to secure those threads needle in my work. So over our pins if we can help it and then just reverse at the top there just to hold that nice and steady for when we're working on the collar snip our threads and if we open that out we've got a lovely seam now we're not going to top stitch these just yet we're going to finish off doing the the fronts so we've got this it's looking a bit like an angel costume isn't it at the moment so you've got your centre back and you've got your sleeves on either side. And what we're going to do now is take our two front pieces, which are here, and then we're going to pop match them so that we're going to pop one over this side here. And there should only be one way of putting them if you're putting them right sides together. It should just fit nicely, nice and neatly together. Match those corner points there for the underarm. Give it a pin a twist if it won't go through. And then we can just fold that out again just to make sure that that's right and that's the centre front there. You can see that I think, can you? Oof, this way. So the centre front there, so we've got a back, a sleeve and then a front and then on this side here we're going to have a back, a sleeve and then we're going to turn our front over so it's right sides together and we're going to pop this together at our match points again. And our neck edge. Neck edge needs to let me smooth down a little bit on my image so. okay so we're going to sew these now again with a quarter of an inch seam allowance on both sides to attach this and that will attach that will then finish attaching those um, sleeves in place and we're starting to get something that's resembling a coat yeah all working well so far so let me just do that and then we'll come back so you can watch me do this bit if you like just line my machine up Couple of stitches forward, and back. Needle in the work just to hold it steady while we just make sure those edges are together. Sewing is about adjusting and readjusting. But that's what's going to give you your accuracy in your sewing and in your finished garments. nicely let's just do the other one and then once I've done that 
Um, I'm going to tell you the other one on it, but I don't need you to watch me, do I? I think you've seen that already. You can always rewind the video if you want to. Once I've finished that, I'm going to push both of these seam allowances in towards the sleeves. Okay, so both seam allowances are going to go in towards the sleeves on both sides. So this side first, in and in, and then I'll go onto this side and in and in, and then that'll be ready for top stitching. That's why it's easier to, to do your top stitching at the end when you've got your sleeves in, because you can remember which side you're working on. So I'm going to, to take that over to the ironing board, once I've done the other side, and press those in place so that they're ready for the top stitching, and then we'll get on with the top stitching. <laughs> 